Hello everyone, my name is Bezad. My name is Risha. And we are here from Naked and Famous Denim, and we are broadcasting to you live from the Intergalactic Space Headquarters of Naked and Famous Denim in Yokohama, Japan. Mm -hmm. It is Saturday morning for us, Friday evening for many of you. Welcome to the live stream. And it looks like we've got Snowy in the background sending a nice meow to everybody letting you guys know that you are welcome here mm -hmm. in the uh in 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 their live raw datum live stream world welcome everybody uh it's a good day we're just getting up it's uh the first live stream of post time change, time change. so it's a little earlier for yeah. us than it usually is so please excuse my slow brain if it's a little bit slower than usual mm -hmm. but uh let's check in with the chat see where everybody's coming in from and uh, checking in from tuning in from and uh maybe that'll get the gears moving a little bit faster in my brain all right chris griffin good to see you familiar face i'm checking in today with my cotton silk blend twill army green and my spring garden selvage the spring garden selvage released today great choice for a, a day like today uh, BD, happy naked and famous denim day. Happy third anniversary, third anniversary to my elephant nine jacket. Huh. Paired it with my elephant twelve jeans today. So, third anniversary with the jeans. That's fantastic. I do not. I never record when I get my jacket. new jean. Me neither. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a very special kind of yeah. uh, raw denim head. That yeah. Does that? I feel like I probably should write it in the marker or something on the pocket, or, or use a fade log. Yeah, that's what yeah. fade log. That's is what for. the fade log is for. <laughs> um, we've got Jenny Kamhorn. Good to see you, Andrew Forasawa. Good to see you, familiar face. Pierre Moreau. Hello from Guelph, Ontario. Wearing my strawberry milk denim. Nice. Great series. We we definitely need to do that that chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. we or, keep talking yeah, about it. Yeah, we definitely it. keep talking about it. Uh, one day, guys. One day. KMX tuning in from Calgary, Alberta, fading my Dragon Ball Z collab Goku tuxedo jacket and super guy in honor of Akira Toriyama. Did you guys work with him during the collaboration? Did he get a sample? We did not work directly with them uh him no. um did he personally get a sample i don't know we send when we do these types of projects we have to send uh like whoever we're doing like the 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 collaboration with we have to send them a certain amount of samples for approval um and i don't know what they do with them afterwards yeah, yeah. i mean i'm sure there are some people who've you know, yeah. oh, I'll take it. One but. time with the Street Fighter uh, collection, we, you know, with every, you know, we made a bunch of jeans. We sent them, uh, you know, maybe, because usually they ask for a couple of pairs of each, I guess, uh, to, to check for consistency. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, I found there was some, there was a, the sample pair that we sent them had a slightly different shade of the metallic foil on the Ryu leather patch. And somebody posted one up on a forum once. He's like, oh, I bought these. I don't know. I, I don't know. We bought them on uh, eBay or something like mm. that. Um, and I'm like, oh, that was <laughs> that was a, 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 a yeah. an approval pair um, that somehow you got your hands on. So uh, I don't know. I don't know if all of the, you know, maybe some of the companies, they get it. And then they're like, you know, we obviously can't warehouse all of the product. Right, exactly. So we just, you know, let it go somehow. Yeah. Um, I would not blame them. That's no, no. Especially cool for thing. a property like Dragon Ball or Street Fighter, like the amount of product yeah. that's made, like they can't 100%. possibly keep it all. Yeah. Um, I remember, I don't know where I saw this. And this is very off topic. Um Every now and then I watch like toy content, like action figure or like figurine collecting on on uh, on on the social media, YouTube or Instagram or whatever. And uh, I guess some guy was criticizing. I guess somebody worked at I don't know one one of these to toy manufacturers, and he's like, every time we do like a revival line, mm -hmm. you know, like oh, you know, we're gonna do like a uh, a revival of like some '80s toy set that we did. Mm -hmm. um, he's like. He's like, you think we would have kept the masters of all of these things in our archive? He's like, no. Whenever we want to do an, a revival line, we just go on eBay and buy all the old toys and then do it based on that. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. But the person was like very offended that the company didn't keep an archive. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, 
I understand that because to like to me and you, it like rather like if you're the toy collector, like uh-huh. you would feel like yeah, it makes total sense that you would because it's like so unbelievably special to you this hobby, and like you know the company for sure. Obviously, it's special to them; it's their money maker. But it's like at the same time they put out so many lines mm-hmm. that like you know they don't know if one thing is going to be a hit twenty years you know down the road where there's like a, a tremendous amount of nostalgia for it. So like you know at the time it's just like okay, I made the product. Yeah. Let's move on. I right? mean, for us, too, like, we, we yeah. know that we should keep everything, and we try to keep everything. Yeah. And, like, uh, when I was there, certainly I tried my best yeah. to keep every one of everything um, in the archive. But things go missing. People just, you know, take it because we don't have enough units for an order or something. Like, at that time, like, you know, it's, like... Me w- wanting to keep all the archive is just my, you know, OCD-ness, right? Like, yeah. I just feel like if we start an archive, which we should, then we should have every single one. And I don't want anybody touching that. But it's like, you know, at some point when we're just, like, working, 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 it's like, oh, we have, we probably have another one in the building somewhere. Yeah. We might as well just please this customer. Like, yeah. you know, things like that. It just... Yeah. I don't know. It, it, and it can very quickly become overwhelming. Like It can very know. quickly yeah. lose, like, just the, you know, like, you feel like the archive's just going to be there because yeah. we ha- we made so many yeah. jeans that we must be able to find another yeah. one and then yeah. just kind of... Right now, the condition of the Naked and Famous archive is, like, there are, like, a couple of cartons of samples from every season, and mm-hmm. they're just in a room. Mm-hmm. And they are not organized. Like, the boxes are labeled, like, spring, summer 2022 or, you know, fall, yeah. winter 17. But, anyhow, it's all... I'm also not sure how, like, you know, how yeah. keeping yeah. it up yeah. these yeah. days. One day there will be an archivist. One day. Yeah, and, I mean... And you know what? It'll be a long time. I'll probably be long dead by then. And their job will be to be like, oh, you know, in the book. The, yeah. The, Oh, there used to be a live stream, and this yeah. weirdo used to talk about jeans for two hours. Um. <laughs> but, like, it's it's the time before that that it's just going to be hard, like, when we had, you know, the only the paper catalog. I would, maybe, maybe. But you know what? Yeah, it's tough. I actually have an, I have most of the, doc, like, documents, like, the PDF files of all of our old line sheets. Oh yeah, it's but, all server. Yeah, yeah. but if anybody uh, can get like get yeah. that server, you know, archived. So long then. as that that server doesn't. Go but it's down. not like all in the same place neatly. It just yeah. you know spread Everywhere. into yeah. I remember one time Brandon, uh, his his like computer died, and a lot of early naked and famous denim stuff uh, yeah. went dead. And yeah. like his hard, it was his hard drive died. We sent it to like one of those crazy hard drive. Uh, recovery places like we we found like a the company that does it like on a uh i don't know like a i were doing research and it was like if if nobody can recover your information we can recover your information like you know this is like cia level like you know top of the top and then um yeah cia the cia uses them all the time um <laughs> uh and then we sent it to them and they're like yeah no like the platter Here's like this thing is dust. Like it's it's whatever happened to this, it's over. Like that data is gonzo. I remember one time I like my computer like just decided to quit, Mm -hmm. and I had to get like I have to I had to get like a data like you know recovery. It's not like there was anything important. It's Mm -hmm. just that you know sentimental value and stuff like that. So I went to this like random guy's house. (laughs) It's so sketchy. Like I looked it up online, yeah. you know, with my limited knowledge of these things, and then like, yeah, yeah, yeah just bring it, like, because he was in Tokyo, and yeah. it's like, just bring it, drop it off, and then I'll take a look. And yeah. you know, he had good reviews and yeah. all of it. And then it's like when I showed up, it was just like dingy old apartments. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, just, I don't know. I'll don't... Like it. I should have told somebody that I'm gonna be here. <laughs> but it all worked out. Yeah. He recovered maybe half of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, better better half than none. Mm. Uh, and you're alive. Hooray! So, no harm. So so it, it all worked out. That's a nice guy. Um. All right. Well, there was a little uh, sidetrack, but I, I mm-hmm. did I did bring it back in to uh, naked and famous denim related. That's for sure. 
Um, we've got a riff in the house. Happy Friday, everyone. Hello from Chicago. Uh, some random guy going to Vegas for a week in my dirty fade true guys are uh, in my dirty fade true guys uh, are going to be in my rotation there. Nice. Well, great choice. I hope you enjoy Las Vegas. I was just having a conversation with someone the other day about how much I actually like Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Industry people are very mixed on Las Vegas, I have to say. And for some reason, a lot of people are down on it. And I was never down on it. I was always up on Vegas. I feel like it's like, you know, people say that just because. Just to like, say it. Yeah. Just because, just like, it's like, oh, it's so, you know, like. Cheesy or yeah, whatever, like, like cliche. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, yeah. no, it's it's cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. Yeah. Like, it's so efficient. I love Vegas. It's a great place. Wonderful place. Cheers to the good people. Like, that, that of town Vegas. is. A, it's just literally made, designed yeah. for conventions. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you're doing business there, it is it is the easiest place to do business in the world. Yeah. It's a little funny because it's the the city's designed for convention yeah. and bachelor parties. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a little <laughs> yeah. confusing. Yeah, a little bit of both. But yeah, I have to what I loved about uh, our time going to Vegas was just the pure efficiency of that town. Like McCarran Airport is 20 minutes away from your hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, when you go to New York, good luck. It's an hour. You know, you, if you land in Newark, it's going to be an hour to get into the city. Traffic is a nightmare. Um, and then, you know, you get to the venue. If you go there in the winter, it's cold. Um, getting a taxi is impossible. Not impossible. It's just hard. Whereas in Vegas, you want a taxi? Just line up at any hotel. And the next hotel mm-hmm. is a uh, five-minute walk away. Yeah, and there's like, always somebody there to yeah, help you. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's a very friendly... Very friendly environment. So, yeah. cheers to Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas, as, as, uh, they, say. as they say. Yeah. Uh, and there was the Pinball Hall of Fame there, which we had a great fun. time at. Yeah. So, uh, can't say enough good things about Las Vegas. Uh, look, it's the Wizard of 32 Ounce. Hello, That's everyone, nice. he says. This is Garrett, the, the Wizard, the Tate and Yoko... Manager, you may remember him from such episodes, such videos as this week at Tate and Yoko. And He's the main character yeah. in that star. Yeah, the the star. He's the star of the show. <laughs> uh, so, any every, everybody, welcome Garrett to the chat. Uh, we've got Kelly John Biswell. Will there be another heavyweight black denim like the Elephant Seven anytime soon? Uh, anytime soon? Yes, we have fall. coming this fall the Shinigami. Selvage, which is the revival of the Akuma denim and the Trunks denim. So if you guys remember that 18-ounce big slub, heavyweight denim, very, very textured, beautiful fading properties. It was only ever available as those two options. It never came out in the main line Naked and Famous collection. This time it's going to be in the main line Naked and Famous denim collection. So if you're waiting for a heavyweight black, that's the one to get. If you didn't already get... The MIJ-13. Mm-hmm. Though it's not quite as heavy as that one, it is still a very slubby and beefy denim. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there you go. Um, ca- uh, Canadian Penny writes, what would the Las Vegas City gene be? Mm, interesting. Hmm. I don't know. It'd have to do with money. Lots of money. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a good question. That's but, a uh, good question. It, uh, some... some Mm, it has to be flashy. Like that, you know what we did with like real gold selvage? Mm. We got the gold plated buttons. Yeah. Like that vibe is kind of. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. Bachelorette party, uh, pocket bags. Oh, like just the. Yeah, Chippendales. Chippendales. No, what do they have? They had the Thunder from Down Under. Yes. Yeah, that they was. They do have Chippendale too. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. I just remember the billboard as we would always yeah. leave the airport. Gigantic billboard. Thunder from Down Thunder Under. Thunder from Down it's Under. A good name. <laughs> yeah, it's a great name. And uh, I remember my first time in Vegas. The absolute first time. I got off the airplane and they had this giant sign in the airport. It was like shoot a real machine gun, and it was like some bikini babe and like an M50 machine gun. Like I'm just like. I've come to America. This is yeah. this is this, this is, is America, America man. Uh, and like every time we come to big Vegas, Brandon's like, "What do you guys want to do?" I'm like, "Thunder from down under." Like we got this, the billboard's been there for years. Obviously, 
it's got to be a good show. Otherwise, that sign won't be there. So we got to do it. Uh, anyhow, if anybody here has experienced uh, that show, let us know how it is. We'll uh, we'll check it out. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I remember when, less so later on when we would go to Vegas, but early we would go and we would stay at the Venetian a lot. And every time we'd go there, I don't know, I guess because we stayed there a bunch of times, they'd all, they'd offer us like show tickets. And I remember one time uh, we we got to the counter and they were like, you know, hey, we'd like to give you some complimentary tickets. And it was like for Blue Man Group or Jersey Boys. And not to knock either one of those shows, uh, to be Jersey fair. Boys I'm sure they're like fine. Jersey Boys is like a musical, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not they're, like a... They're both musical acts, right? And uh, Brandon, just, me and Brandon just looked at each other like, uh, we don't want any of those tickets. Hmm. I don't know. Well, we probably should have. We probably should have enjoyed it. I remember those Intel commercials with the Blue Man Group. I found those to be quite entertaining. I learned about Blue Man Group from the rest of the book. That's right. And, and I went to Vegas after I watched yeah. that, and I was very confused. <laughs> <You know, laughs> <Wait>. This is real? <laughs> it is real. It's a real thing. Um, all right. Uh, Invis Ian's writes, Las Vegas Jean, green fades to white like your pockets are being emptied out. Come on, guys. That's not the attitude. Your pockets are going to be filled with money. Green fades to gold. Yeah, no, green. white fades to gold. I don't know. Indigo fades to gold. Gold, yeah. We got to have a... Gold or green. Thunder from down under pocket bag, money pocket bag, um, something mm. like that. That's the way to do it. <laughs> you're gonna have a great time uh and spending money and debauchery las vegas and steak good food good food um pedro writes good question let's hear the 411 on the left hand twill blue owl that dropped today please and mm. thank you well let me pull it up for those of you who uh, would like to know including uh, i'm sure everybody uh shop.com so blue owl we did a, a special collaboration with blue owl today um you know hold on a second didn't load i just want I think to... they'll use this i think oh yeah. is it yeah something's wrong with my computer blue owl. My computer is... Blue Owl US, not US. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. We got it. So, today, we released with uh, Blue Owl Workshop the Double Black Left Hand Twill Salvage. So, you guys may or may not be aware that we do, uh, left, we do collaborations with Blue Owl from time to time. They're exclusive releases just for them. And oftentimes we work with our left hand twill denim and we actually make a special version of our left hand twill for them that is slightly more textured and slubby. And so today we dropped the double black left hand twill selvage. Uh, so if you've been looking for a black edition of the left hand twill, now is definitely the time to do so and Blue Owl is the place to do it. Uh, as you can see, even from far, it's got that slubby texture. And with the black, it you know I think it really kind of shows through, as you can see uh, here in the photos. Um, yeah, this is like a, a mini version of the Shinigami Selvage, mm. right? It's not as heavyweight. There's a, definitely a better year-rounder mm -hmm. jean to wear. And of course, being left-hand twill, it's going to soften up nicely over time. Um, I just sometimes between us and Blue Owl, whenever we do our kind of collaboration items, um, like you know, we plan it out. But like as far as like their release time, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'm in the dark, uh, <laughs> so I don't get the pro I don't get as much time to talk about it or promote it. So like I saw, uh, they posted it this week, so I shared it on our on our socials. Um, but yeah, uh, available now, limited quantities. The text, look, that's a great photo, yeah. by the way. That Just photos a, are always yeah, great. Beautiful photo. You can really pick up on that texture here. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very inky, inky black yeah, denim. Yeah, it's got the, like, a lust to it. Yeah. That's, that's, Lust, that's great. Yeah. lusty, like Las Vegas. No, I'm going too far with that one. Um, anyhow, double black. Left hand twill selvage available in 
the weird guy, true guy, and easy guy fits. Sorry, super guy fans. But uh, yeah, no super guy on that one. Um, sizing is limited, that's for sure. Um, they still have easy guys. And actually not true guys, uh, I guess some of the uh, bigger sizes are gone, but uh, everything else seems to be here. So uh, get it while you can, because this was a one-time production. When they're gone, they are gone. And in addition, we just dropped the Spring Garden Selvage. You can see that it's available here on Blue Owl as well. They have it here in the Weird Guy. And on Tate and Yoko, pronounced Tate and Yoko, we also have them available uh, here. Those beautiful indigo denim with the multi-color weft interior I think one of the more classically beautiful denims that we've made uh, with that very subtle pastel multi-colored weft interior. So uh, available now, you can get your pair. Uh, sizes are available. So super weird, easy, and true, guys. Uh, so for those people who already have them, I hope you are enjoying them. Um, okay. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Canadian Penny, will Naked and Famous ever issue that slubby or left hand tool themselves? Mm, I don't think so. I think that's going to stay a blue owl situation. Um, all right. Uh, Unless, pay like, decades down the line, we find that random. Yeah. Rolls. That's right. Unless, yeah, sometimes <laughs> that there, seems to yeah, happen. If there's, like, two rolls in the, in the warehouse and we can make, like, I don't know, 40 pairs of jeans, we'll, uh, we'll just make them. <laughs> Um, Ryu uh, Saitama writes, Hello, is there a release date for the hemp denim? Not yet, mm. but I will have that soon. Yeah. Soon. Um, it's, uh, it's a common. Um, There's not much more new spring items no, that are left to release. Ocean's Edge. Ocean's Edge. Hemp. Yeah. Craftsman. Craftsman, yeah, that's a good one. Is that it? Is that it? I think that and might be it. Oh, matcha is not. And the matcha. Yet. So yeah. four. There's four more to go. The next one's yeah. matcha. Yeah. Right. Everything should be out by May. Right. Yeah. Yeah. By May. But so within May. Within May. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's still a couple more releases to come through the pipeline. But yeah, we're uh, we're on schedule this year. I think last year we were we were doing spring summer releases like well until the summer. So. Uh, we're yeah. getting things out early so that you can enjoy them for much longer yeah. into this we season. We finally caught up from the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> it, it definitely took a while. That mm. uh, that pandemic backlog really uh, set us back a, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It, like on TV, I saw the other day that it was uh, the four-year anniversary since the mm. COVID-19 pandemic was declared. And I'm like... Man, it went by so slow and so fast at the same time. And I'm just I'm just going to say it. Can we get a parade or something? Like, you know. Maybe in a five-year anniversary. Yeah, like, can we, maybe five-year anniversary? Can we just get a celebratory parade? Like, we beat this thing? Can we Can we get that, at least? Right? Yeah, somebody's going to organize it. I'll organize it. The global, yeah, do it. the global, we'll, we'll start it off in Wuhan, China, and then we'll, we'll, tour around yeah, the we'll world. do a tour around the world. So we'll start from, I'm not even going to get into it. I was about to, I was about to get into it. I'm not going to get into no. it. Um, no. but, uh, yeah, what can I say? Um, I just, I feel like we all deserve a little bit of, uh, something from all this, right? We all, we went through a global thing together. Mm -hmm. Now we need to, Put it to rest and say we did it you know yeah i mean somebody mentioned the olympics but that that's right like it's it's really the olympic would probably be the just the olympic used to be the only thing that unites the world yeah at the same time i guess and the pandemic yeah. killed the yeah. Olympic. Andrew Gloves, they're doing that for the Olympics. Oh yeah, by the way, can Tokyo get some money back from the, from Can Tokyo get some like experience back? Yeah. Ah, we were robbed. Yeah, we were robbed of an Olympics. You have I remember um, you know, coming to Japan more frequently around 2010. 
Mm-hmm. And like every year, every like we would come a couple times a year, and like we'd like every time we'd come, there'd be something new that they're building for the Olympics, and there'd all these Olympic signs, all these Olympic signs, and then just to like that Olympics not happen, very. Uh, well, it did happen, but yeah, it was well, just, we're not allowed to be a part of it. Yeah, that's I it. mean, you know, to to a degree, like I'm really because I I was dreading like just the you know the chaos of mm. that, but I could have just stayed home that's if true. I wanted to avoid it. So like I don't know. I have a mixed feeling, but I I wish we had, like, I was very excited because I would obviously never gonna, you know, happen to live in a city that's gonna host the Olympic for the rest of my life. Like, I I don't think that would happen unless I move to Paris next year. Right. Or this year. Mm. In a couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. 74, they had the Tokyo Olympics. 74 or 78? 68. 68, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then it took till 2020, so... It's not coming back. Okay, yeah, I think if they ever happened. consider it, they'll be like, remember what happened last time? No, no, we're not doing it no more. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Never again. Um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm also not saying that it's only bad things. You know, Tokyo did it, was forced to, like, put money into... Infrastructure. It, yeah, yeah, and that wasn't bad. Yeah. And, the, and the current state of Tokyo tourism is... It's Tremendous. very great yeah. for for international travel. O- on the news and like you know here and there, I always see these articles about over tourism in Tokyo. I'm like, don't don't ever use that word. It is great. All the people coming to this country, enjoying it, going back with great memories, spending their money here, boosting the economy here. Keep it coming, keep it coming, guys. Please come to Japan. It's a very nice place to be. And for use use Americans out there. Your American peso is worth so much money here. Oh, uh, so much. Uh, so the whole country is on sale. It really is. The whole country is on sale. Go to the nice hotels. Go to the nice restaurants. It's going to be... And even considering what cost of living is in the West right now, mm-hmm. your money goes so far here. Yeah. Just just do it. Get Just call your travel agent. Call your travel agent. Who's your travel yeah, agent? because your money is so wealthy. You're now you don't even you have got, to book you it yourself. It. <laughs> Calling a travel agent is a luxury, you know, endeavor. Just say, hey, book me for Tokyo. I don't care where. No, book me in the best place, and don't call me back until you've got it all sorted out for me. And then mail me my tickets. I want to have physical tickets in hand when I get to the airport. I'm not dealing with that stupid check-in counter thing machine. Talking to people luxury experience get on the concord revive it be in tokyo in six hours wouldn't that be nice wouldn't that be nice uh but anyways please come and uh enjoy tokyo it's a good time it's a good time to be here wizard of 32 on says see you next month all right i hope it's i hope it's a confirmed but uh we'll uh we'll, we'll be happy to see you here on our home turf uh, so cram 718 writes, loving the glasses, Bezad. Bezad's eyes are getting lazy. So Bezad's got to wear glasses again. Um, you to go be, through some phases. Yeah, I can see without them. Yeah. But I see better with them. Right. And uh, I think that's what. I think that's what they're for. Some people yeah. can't see without glasses. Right. Like some people yeah. are blind without glasses. I'm. Those people never take off their glasses yeah. in public. I'm. Uh, I put them on the other day just because I need, just felt like I needed to see a little bit better. And then I'm like, oh, I, when I take them off, I'm like, oh, yeah, what's going on here? It so, is, it is pretty amazing when you just realize what you weren't seeing. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, they'll they'll be on for a while. Uh, nice, thick, thick rimmed effector. If you're if you're curious, I, I feel like I'm on the the this week at Tate Yoko. But uh, the brand is called Effector, and yeah, they, uh, they're made in Japan. Very nice glasses. Happy with them. They make cool stuff. Uh, all like kind of vintage inspired. Um, Venomous Teddy writes, I noticed you squinting at, uh, squinting a lot during the live stream in recent times. Yeah, oh. it's, uh, it's, oh, my old age. it's my old age. It's my old age. Flavor uh, Factory Records, I am new in salvage jeans. Which model is best comfort? Uh, My girlfriend is a dancer. Thank you. Which model for best comfort? 
uh, for your girlfriend or for, for you, you? Yeah, for you or your girlfriend. Like for you to watch your girlfriend <laughs> perform her dances. Um, I suppose uh, that's a good question. Um, let's think here. I'm new. If you're new to raw denim, I think you've got two. The two best options. Consider the stretch selvage because it's rigid, but it's not particularly rigid. It's got 2% stretch, breaks in very easy. And if you're coming from comfort denim land, you know, maybe your jeans were pre-distressed, pre-washed, had a lot of stretch in them, it'll be an easy transition for you to get into. You've got that classic dark indigo look, selvage, slightly rigid, they're gonna fade beautifully. So you get everything that you're looking for. And then once you've kind of you've had that for a year, Maybe you want to get into something with a little bit more structure to it, like a 100% cotton, or you could just jump into the 100% cotton and just, you know, bite the bullet and, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, go for the full raw denim experience. And in that case, I would recommend the left hand twill selvage. That's always left hand twill. Oh, I, mm, I would say left hand twill over dirty fade. The dirty fade is a little bit heavier um, and a little bit more crunchy a little bit not by a lot but the left hand twill i think it breaks down very nice and softly and uh, it fades beautifully you got the full 100 percent cotton raw denim experience slightly heavier than the norm like a 12 and a half ounce would kind of be like a very regular weight denim mm -hmm. this is a little bit heavier at 13.75 so i would say stretch selvage if you want to be a little bit more comfortable or if you want to just dive right in get the left hand twill selvage what do you think risa yeah, um, I think those are, are just the golden uh, recommendation. Um, but if you want um, your jeans for real comfort, mm. real, real comfort, like if, you, if your girlfriend wants to dance in them, mm. we do have a new thing called Blue Comfort yep. Stretch Selvage yep. coming out for, uh, for fall That's right. this year, which is... Very stretchy, eleven person, something like that. Yeah, it's it's very stretchy. You can actually like stretch in them, like you know, like move around, dance around, probably yeah. in them. But it is salvage, so that's yeah. gonna be a good option for you know people who just want the salvage and wants to fade. It is indigo; it will fade, um, but not deal with any kind of you know, restriction at all. Right. Jameson Keating here writes, speaking of dancer girlfriends, mine has been rocking her midnight power stretch for a few years now and is getting some legendary fades. Mm. We'll post up a fade review soon. Ooh, yeah, can't wait. Jameson and his girlfriend are incredible dancers, by the way. They, mm. they, they oh, I think yeah. I know. Yeah, They'll okay, like, I made the connection. Yeah. They do the split. Yeah. Dude, you can jump. You can do backflips and, and, and like splits in the air at the same time. In, your photos are great. I always yeah, like yeah, seeing yeah. Uh, what oh, you guys can do with them. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... I, I got to share this with the Naked Famous world because your photos are always great. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. There we go. Uh, everybody go follow Jameson here on M in Instagram. Oh, I got to find one where you're wearing the raw denim. But uh, oh, that there, this one. This one is, I remember seeing this. I'm like, wow, it's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Look at this, guys. Just some super moves over here. Um, so go check out Jameson on Instagram. A great member of the raw denim community here. And uh, very talented and fantastic. Look at this. Unbelievable. Some some graceful moves there. Yeah. Smooth moves. Uh, so 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 check it out. Um, yeah, that one too. I remember seeing uh -huh. that one. I'm like, wow. So, uh, there you go. There you have it, everyone. Uh, you can, in fact, dance and get down in raw denim. Uh, certified. It's been certified. Um, okay. Um, Max writes, what weight will the blue comfort stretch selvage be? It's like 14, 14 or 14 and a half. Something like yeah, that, yeah. In that, in that so realm. It's, it's a pretty beefy. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a lot heavier than like stretch selvage. Right. Um, uh, Douglas writes, loved the brief factory tour in this week's uh, this week at Tate and Yoko. You should show off more of the process next time. I agree. <laughs> I was watching the live. I was watching. 
as uh, if you watched the the last episode, you know some somebody in the comment was like, "Does Bayzad actually edit these?" Yes, Bayzad actually edits these. So, uh, and you you saw my little uh, reaction in the video. I, I made my own appearance in that, but I was like, "Okay, they're they're walking towards the factory." And uh, Terry's explaining it all, and I'm not sure who the videographer was. Maybe it was Vinny. Um, but I'm like, yeah, just, just turn the camera. Yeah. <laughs> show the factory. Next time. Yeah. Next time, show it. Garrett, show the factory. And the thing is, is that the ladies who are in there who are working, this is probably what happened is that, like, they definitely don't want to be on the internet. Like, yeah. they're just, you know how it is. Like, some people, like, Obviously, you know, it's like you take a camera and like, oh, don't take my picture. Like these are yeah. these, these these people didn't definitely didn't want to be in there. But uh, yeah, anyhow, uh, yeah, we just have to do it yeah, after uh, they go home. Yeah, after they go home. <laughs> uh, Garrett writes, people are still working. Yeah, that's true. But uh, anyhow, just maybe do it when uh, when there there are uh, people have gone home for the day. Um, yeah, uh, James and Kidding in my perfect cells. Uh, Jameson Keating writes, he was in his perfect cells in those pictures. Stretch, salvage, guys, look into it. <laughs> it does It does the job. It mm -hmm. does the job. Um, uh, uh, Sam Wang writes, how come your cashmere salvage doesn't get more love? Um, I don't know. I Here's I... why. Here's why, I think. People very closely associate cashmere with winter. And so people see cashmere and it, they're like, well, this isn't an all year thing for me. This is like wearing a sweater. And so I think some, like the people who have it, love it, enjoy it. It's very, very comfortable. But I think the hump is trying to get people to understand that this is something that you can wear mm -hmm. all year. I think that's yeah. kind of happening these days. Like I feel like people are like becoming aware that wool or that cashmere or alpaca and those kind of things because it's so you know it exists in nature like it, it they, they live in the summertime too so it's like you know the the properties are of course it keeps you warm but also it's it's great for you know moisture wicking mm -hmm. wicking moisture wicking wicking yeah. um and you know stuff like that so the properties i feel like people are starting to realize that these properties are good all year around so right. we just have to get the messages out yeah uh so there you have it it uh, is actually like 12 on so something it's, yeah, it's relatively it's lightweight it's very it's lighter weight is very 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 and, and they wash down incredibly mm -hmm. uh very very nice fabric um uh min min mignon mignon maxim writes i did Hands-free cartwheels in my Sea Island salvage. Nice. Well, there you go. Hands-free Hands -free. cartwheel. Yeah. One How do time. You, do that? you just—it's like, like a flip. Yeah. Like you—you you need a lot of momentum. You need to, some to amount of momentum do to do that. I would imagine, hands. or some know. some. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. My New Year's resolution was to do <laughs> a cartwheel, <laughs> and uh, I did it. You did it. Magnificent. <laughs> it was magnificent. It was magnificent one. Um. Mine was to floss. Did it. 1201. Blood everywhere. Blood everywhere. Uh, what can I say? Um, all right. Uh, let's see what else we have here in the chat. Uh, okay. Uh, so Kram writes, fourth time getting a pat down at the airport with the king of slub at U.S. airports. LOL. Yeah, it's, it's the denim probably. Here's what it is. It's like, they see the imprint of your wallet or your phone or whatever, and they assume that it's still in there. I get pat down a lot at the airport, mostly because I think I'm very attractive and that the people who work there are perverts. But the other part is that there's clearly this marking of a phone or a wallet in my back pocket, and they're like, this guy, this idiot didn't empty his pockets, and it didn't, like set off the pervert machine that they look through your naked body. Um, and so they're like, all right, well, time to get handsy. And then they start feeling all your junk. They only, they only touch you if you, you walk through the metal detector, right? Like if, if 
Ye- if it no, was, no. If, if it, it was the scan, no, it, yeah, they the, would co- that they, they would be like take out stuff in your what um, pocket. You go back in there. No, I've had I've had both. Mm. Yeah, I, I I think they're. I think they hire perverts. They and just want to touch you. Yeah, they just want to touch me. Can't resist. Yeah, it's like you know you get into this situation where the guy's like about to go into like the end zone and he's like, "Is it okay?" And I'm like, "What what do you want me to tell you, bro?" Wait, no. what? Yeah, like end zone. You know your your junk area. Do they touch? Yeah, of course they touch. The guys like you know he uses like usually they use the back of their hand, but they're they're checking, and and then they're like, you know, is it okay? I'm like, what do you want? What do you want me to tell you? Is this okay? I'm like, no, it's not okay. But I don't have a choice here now, do I? Now do your thing and let me go. I don't think I was I've ever been pat down like that, like armpit, like. Yeah, armpit. This area, yeah. for sure. You want to but... feel on my armpits and, you know, take some of that smell home with you? Look, man, there's a lot of... I'm not going to kink shame anybody. If that's your thing, go for it. But, yeah, anyways. Uh, I wonder, now that I'm wearing the jeans that you put wallet fade in... Yeah. That I... That oh, yeah. I sp- wonder if they're going to pro- start patting me down. Probably. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the last time, Andrew writes, the last time I went through Pearson, none of the TSA agents cared at all. They just want to get people through there so quick. Mm, maybe. You know, the funny thing about air travel, now we're going to get into some air travel talk. This is a great conversation, guys. The thing about air travel uh, is I remember, like, traveling during the pandemic, and I have to say that for the most part, it was the best travel experience of, not the most part, parts of it were the best travel experience of my life, because I remember going to, like, Narita Airport, and Risa and I and 10 other people were probably the only people in the airport, like, we got on that plane so fast, like, there was nobody on that plane, like, we are on a giant airplane from Tokyo to Montreal, nobody on it. Um, and then like you get the security and there was like nobody there, but I remember in the height of it, like when travel was starting to come back and they didn't know how to deal with it. Um, you know, there was all these crazy lineups, these crazy backlogs. And, uh, I think some of that has like spilt over into like, yo, just keep that line moving. And I'm like, is, is, is security even happening anymore? Cause I remember like I had my bag and like it was going through a, uh, the scanner part and no joke, there was 14 people at the scanner. Mm-hmm. I'm not even lying. 14 people at the scanner. And, like, I, I had to put all my stuff on the tray. And at one point, like, my, my, my wallet was on top of the thing. And, you know, at one point, they're like, okay, stand over there. So I'm standing. And they're like, oh, you got to put your wallet away, sir. Like, you got you to gotta conceal that. And I'm like, conceal it from who? Who's going to take this? And I literally said that, and then as there are 14 security officers looking at my stuff, the the person says, oh, you'd be surprised. And I'm like, Shh. But you're the security. But you're <laughs> supposed to secure this. So what am I supposed to be, su- oh, so what you're telling me is that you guys steal. <laughs> and then I should keep my eye on you. Anyways, I was, it was, it was. So frustrating. Anyways. To be fair, that was a training day. And that wasn't really, like, you know. Yeah. 14 but, fully capable But let, letting it out of the bag that I would be surprised how much stuff gets stolen by them. Oh, is, I learned uh, that from Orange yeah, yeah. is the New Black. That they just do steal. Yeah. I, I got the confirmation on that show. Yeah. <laughs> Chief Miggy, there's been times where they get caught for stealing. Yeah, that's great. It's just like <laughs> airport security. They're just like, anyhow. As you can see, uh, these people, uh, airport security people, are some of my favorite people in the world. And uh, I show, man, the amount of respect I have for the hardworking people at airport security. But, you know, it's like it's they, do, the they do get the bad rep. Like, it, the, most of the time, they're just doing their job. Like, they're not, you know, like, they don't take pleasure in it. just they have to do it. Sometimes there are oh, drugs I think that th- take I think some people take a lot of pleasure. But I also been have encountered people that are overly like 
nice and considerate because they know that yeah. we all hate them. Let me say this. Vegas, their staff is always nice. I don't know what Vegas and Service and and also people. I have to say that here in Japan it's also a breeze. It's never a problem. Yeah, but they're not. They're not. It's, they they know the rules. Yeah, they, they, these people are literally the yeah. ones that yeah. are just doing their job. They're not trying to offend yeah. you. They just yeah. gotta do what gotta do. I just remember our la- like our last trip coming home from New York and like the guy at the counter was just yelling at people, just like like. Ferociously yelling at people, like "Stand over here, go over there." Did I tell you to move? And I'm just like, yeah. "What is wrong like, with you?" Yeah, like they just they they just they yeah. they feel like they have a power in this situation, and yeah. they do, they do a little. Yeah, they definitely but, do, and it's like, wow. Yeah, I but didn't... it's just like, what what is the point? Like we all are trying to follow the rules, but yeah. your rules are sometimes confusing because you're here every day and you know your rules, yeah. but for most of us. This is the first time we're in this in your in line. your yeah, yeah security yeah. zone. Yeah. So just yeah, and the way you treat this line and the way the next person treats this line is gonna be completely different. Very so different. you know, take it easy and and nobody says to this guy, don't yell at the passengers. Like, you know. Anyhow, nonsense. Uh, so Kram writes, JFK is rude AF. LOL. Yeah, I definitely oh. felt that. I definitely you know, felt I that. used to travel with samples, and yeah. I was very you know. Japanese in that way, like because I, I was traveling for a, a, a job, mm-hmm. so I couldn't risk like bringing in samples and you know get getting them confis- confiscated. Yeah. So I would declare the the paperwork. It's called carne. Like you have to like you know like apply it weeks in advance and you know prepare for it. And you also have to like just talk to the customer's agent and just you know show that like these paperwork are filed and these are the actual samples and blah blah blah. And JFK, there's one person at JFK who was the worst, mm. literally worst. And I would sometimes travel with another coworker of mine who's doing the same thing. And like I would just like like if I get that guy, I was like avoid this like avoid this like. <laughs> Line. Yeah, it was just like, like, he was like the oldest guy who just wanted to live to bully people who did the job properly, at least to the extent that they could. Right. Anyways. Right. Anyways. Yeah, they're they're just anyhow. They're they're very they're very nice people who uh, deserve all of our love and respect and praise. So, uh, cheers to all the friendly folks at the airport who make traveling a joy. Here's to you. No, I do appreciate the friendly ones, actually. Yeah, yeah. friendly ones, sure. But uh, shout outs to all of you. Uh, yeah. Um, James and Keating, the rules are different in almost every airport I've been to. I've always feel bad asking what I need to take out of my bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's and like it some changes airports. all the time, yeah. even in the yeah. same yeah. airport. Yeah. Even in the same airport, though, I've, I've, I think I was in Chicago last time where they're like, okay, leave everything in your bag. I'm like, great. And then you have, then they march you through this line of dogs, which I, I, there was like this whole like dog lineup. I was like, okay, everybody, there was like five of you. Okay, walk. Okay, now walk. Right. And then we all have to walk straight. And there's like this, it's like, it, it kind of feels like an obstacle course where like there's these dogs who are just like on the sides, just like sniffing you all That's out. Kind of fun. And I'm like, okay, this is fun. Um, and yeah, it's like, okay, uh, leave your electronics in, but take your laptop out. Uh, or like, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm taking off my laptop. Like, oh no, no, leave it in your bag. I'm like, fine. And you, just, you go back to the same airport, take it out. And then you're pulling out. I'm like, do I need to take out my iPad? No, I said laptops only. I'm like, Okay, what yeah. is the difference between a laptop and an iPad? Like, y- even you guys. Yeah, what what, yeah. what do I do with my Surface with the keyboard on? Like, right, it's yeah. like, is it a laptop? Is it a, a right. tablet? But also, like, you know, with shoes, like, sometimes you ask, like, do I need to take off my shoes? And it's like, let me see your shoes. Yeah. It's like, just, just pick one. <laughs> just pick a side. Yeah. Pick, like, pick a lane, guys. Yeah. Uh, they're like, oh, if your ankles are showing, you don't have to take them off. If they are, if they yeah. if the boots are higher than this, I'm like, okay, well, I have some really chunky boots that show my ankles. I'm like, eh, like you gotta take those off. Partially show my ankles, yeah. like it just stops right at the. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, uh, don't you know? You guys can all be frustrated, but it ain't my fault. You guys figure out your own rules. 
figure out the rules and let us know. Um, okay, back to reality. Okay, here's a here's a question, airport question, airline question, just because it's on my mind. To recline or not to recline your seat on the plane? I recline. Um, if it's a long haul. Full recline? No. That's, no. You never full recline. Never full recline, and I never recline until after the first meal. Because at, during the meal, you have to bring it back. And usually, the first meal comes pretty quickly after. Yeah. And you're still also not like dead tired at that point so or very uncomfortable at that point so i would definitely wait to do anything until i'm done with the meal they take out the the person's plate and then i'll just like sneak look and then just recline like halfway halfway okay on a long haul long haul yeah short haul are you reclining like I don't think five so. hours or less? No, I don't think right. so. I just don't want to like get into issues. Like yeah. I, I wish I could, yeah. but I don't want to yeah. like you know. I'm a very like, if I recline, I'm going like ten or fifteen percent max. I just I don't rec- I don't want anyone to recline on me. I just don't. Come on, we don't only have this much space. I also don't know how much is the like full recline versus what I'm doing. So I don't. I, yeah. I say half, right. but I don't know how much. Mm. Yeah. Just slightly. Yeah, don't full recline. Pro tip, be a, be, a, be a good person on that flight. Don't full recline. And if someone is full reclining in front of you, press the screen really hard. <laughs> Just really, ev- as with as much force as you can, hit that screen. Or like, put the, the, yeah. the desk yeah. back up. Yeah. But, like, just... just putting it out there like the most annoying is the person who goes recline go back recline go back all the time yeah, chill out guys yeah it's just uh, please don't do that um also on shinkansen yeah if you're traveling to japan on shinkansen what i do i think it's a considerate mm-hmm. thing because it's way, it's way more room right mm-hmm. like it's not like an air, airplane yeah. where it, even on the you know regular economy class like it's not it, it's got a lot of room but i think that the nice thing to do is that if you're gonna recline go, get to the seat and recline right away so that like they the, know that this person is coming there's movement it's in the station mm-hmm. blah 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 because in the middle of the, like, you know, oh, yeah. long... There's meals. Yeah, there's meals. Like, it's just, like, sometimes you just don't want to change all of a sudden. So I think the nice thing, the, the the polite thing, is that if you're going to do it, go do it right away when you get there. Right. Uh, so there you go. Tip. Travel etiquette. tip. Pro, pro travel etiquette. Um, oh, and uh, bare feet. Don't do it. <laughs> do people yeah, do that? sometimes you know, like do, on the airplane. Yeah, oh, on the airplane, people yeah. walk to the toilet with socks, and I'm like, that is worse than walking outside in the socks. Don't do it. It's airplane toilet. Yeah, don't oh. do it, guys. This guys, is really yeah. not. This is acceptable. from a, a a a seasoned traveler. Don't do that. Get go. Look, not everyone gets to go to the lounge. We go to the lounge. We, we travel a lot. When you go to the lounge, ask for slippers. They will give you slippers. And then you have some slippers that you can use for the flight, right? Or if you're in business class, they're going to give you slippers. We don't go in business class. I haven't been in there in a long, long, long time. But if you at least have lounge access, maybe you have lounge access with your credit card. Sometimes your credit card gives you a lounge access. Check on that. Take advantage of it. Or just buy some, like a pack of slippers, disposable slippers on Amazon Buy a 50 pack, use those for the flight. You yes. know, if you got to take off your shoes, use those, you know, put your shoes under your seat, whatever, put the slippers on, use those to walk around, be comfortable in, and or, then toss them out when you're done. Or travel in shoes where you can kind of slip in and yeah. out. Like, you know, it's just. Yeah. It, it's be prepared for. Or, like, even when I travel with like regular shoes, no slippers, I would just like take off my sh- shoes at the seat like you know underneath the the, the chairs mm. but then when i get up to go to the washroom i'll put the, the shoes back on that, that that's what most n- normal people do yeah but some people do not do it. mm. it's just it's nuts but Jake. yeah like disposable 
slippers are the best thing.、Mm -hmm. Even when you go to a hotel, you don't want to walk around in the hotel room wearing shoes all the time. But you also don't want to wear, walk around barefoot because some people are using shoes in, in there.、Mm -hmm. So if you have、Those、a slipper. Slippers are great. I have、yeah. a mountain of slippers. It's true. I, was just, I just had another travel pro tip that I forgot. I'm sure it'll come back to my mind in a second. But、uh, yeah. Air, air, airport lounge. Oh, yeah. If you do get the airport lounge, here's a mega, mega, mega pro tip. This is a great pro tip. If you're on a long haul flight, even if you're on a short haul flight, take. If the lounge has a shower, use it. Use that shower. Because usually they have nice soaps and everything. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, take a shower, feel refreshed. Take that shower before you get on that 12 hour flight. Ooh, what a great feeling. Mm -hmm. It is a very, very nice feeling. Use the airport lounge shower if you can. Sometimes they got them, sometimes they don't got them. But、uh, if you can, it is.、Mm, that's, that, that, doing that changed the game for me.、Mm -hmm. Definitely. It depends on the lounge, though.、Mm. I mean, if it's a nice lounge. Yeah, if it is、I、a nice lounge. I've had showers at not the best lounge, and that was in like. Fun.、Mm. I was like,、oh, I don't know if it was worth it. I was stuck in Frankfurt last summer、mm. for over a day in the airport. And、uh, I, they kicked us out of the lounge after, after like 10 o'clock or whatever.、Um, my flight was supposed to be, anyways, my flight was like late, like 11 p.m. or something like that. But the lounge closed at like 10. Anyways, I was at the gate waiting to get on my flight. And then my, you know, while on the tarmac, our flight got canceled. So, They sent us back to the, into the airport and then everybody slept at the airport that night. That was what、mm -hmm. happened. And then I got to the lounge at 8 a.m. when they opened and I immediately ran to that shower in、uh, the Lufthansa lounge. Fantastic shower, great experience.、Mm -hmm. um, uh, on, a, on an Amazon rating scale, five out of five stars.、Mm. Just very, very nice.、Um, Yeah, Frankfurt Lounge、yeah. is one of the best ones、yeah. that I've been to.、Yeah. I've only been to one once. Yeah. That one. L Lufthansa usually has a good lounge. Yeah.、Um, all right. What、so、are some of other p e o p l e s Yeah, give us some other <laughs> travel pro tips.、Um, uh, James and Keating writes A woman walked barefoot into a post office as I was leaving, and I felt like I narrowly escaped a dangerous scenario. You did. Yeah, you did not end up on the news that night, and you. Well, got anybody out of there. walking out. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, the, I can't maybe generalize. The post office the can get a little.、Uh, yeah, that just sounds like a, not a sane situation. Right.、Uh, Alec B writes showers are the biggest game changer.、Mm -hmm. You got it. You know it.、Uh, Magi24 writes, I soaked it, and now. Oh, I guess they're talking about some jeans here.、Mm. Um, Think about soaking some jeans. All right. Well, I, I don't know what that is in reference to, but I will say good, good job.、Um, uh, uh, L. Leiter writes Hi. Wonder, I was wondering the weight of the new elephant series. Thanks. So, the new elephant will be this fall. Elephant. Yeah. The, no. no. Is it? What number was it? Why, Jeez, why I, am I blanking? You know、was、why? Because we didn't number it. We called it like Elephant Red Core. Yeah. So I, is it Elephant I 13? 13? 13? I think it's 13. Maybe, yeah.、Um, and it's going to be 20 ounces. Yeah, 20 yeah. ounces Red Core Elephant. That's right.、Um, Alec B, travel pro tip eye mask and neck pillow. So I've never been a neck pillow person, and I never really. I don't know. Maybe I should give it a try, but I just don't feel like that's going to make me comfortable.、Mm. The pillow, my problem is carrying it around.、Yeah. Um, so I don't, I, I don't like to have too much on me. Yeah. What、um, was the other thing? The eye mask I've used. Yeah. Because、uh -huh. uh, sometimes there's just like these lights 
Oh yeah. And they just, they just still bug me. me. Yeah. I, I used I, to sleep with my light on full oh, on all night every yeah. night. <laughs> I can hardly sleep on a plane, so anything that helps is uh is, is definitely a help. And usually they'll give you a little eye mask. Yeah, yeah. Um, eye masks come, but... and like you can toss those, so it's not something you have to carry around. Last time when we flew with Turkish Airlines to Paris, they did give us a free slippers, which which I thought was nice because yeah. you know like usually in the economy class they don't give you slippers, but. I think they should. Yeah. It's not very expensive. No. And uh, and the toothbrush that came in that toiletry that set was that the, was the worst <laughs> toothbrush I've ever seen. Like, I could not imagine. You know, like, you go to, like, a cheap hotel, like, cheap, cheap business mm. hotel, and they have, a de- like, a regular toothbrush. It's not wonderful, but it's, like, fine. And then this Turkish Airlines is just like, how did you find this bad quality of a toothbrush right. i used it like twice and it was just like literally like all the hairs were like <laughs> yeah it's, it's it was an embarrassment it was an embarrassment to toothbrushes um magic 24 writes oh uh he writes i was talking about my new raw denim jeans not naked and famous that's okay uh spilled water on it and the fibers are elevated and the spot looks super dark like i peed myself uh i would just maybe even it out yeah, yeah. and just uh, maybe yeah. wash the gene yeah. or, or soak the gene and just let that all yeah. balance if out. If you spill something, you just you kind of have to, like, you know, take out your... I, I know maybe your plan was to not wash it for a few months, but you yeah. just, that's out of the window. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you just got to bite the bullet. Yeah. Um, uh, Alec B writes, collapsible foam pillow and my eye mask fit in a small pouch that I hook to my bag. Mm, yeah, right. people are traveling like very smartly these days, yeah. I feel. They uh, have a lot of gadgets. Yeah, I like little, like I, I have a, a, a Steam Deck. It's uh, like a little portable, it looks like a it's Nintendo Switch, but it's not little, like it's, it's big. big. And uh, I find it too big to travel with. That is a little yeah. too big, yeah. Yeah, like even the Nintendo Switch I found was too big and then we got the Switch Lite I felt like that that thing was way better, mm-hmm. um, but I like the Steam Deck because I can play like real PC games on it. But if they made a mini version of that thing, I would I would yeah, get I'm that. Sure the on the it. Steam Deck is it's 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 a big chunky boy. I, mm-hmm. uh, it's neat, but it's not portable. I saw on like MoMA website that they have this like little like I think carry on size suitcase that that somebody designed. That goes like you open it and then you like pull out a thing and then it becomes a shelf. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then it's like you can pack it like that and then you can like open it and have it standing and then it just becomes a shelf in yeah. your hotel room. Yeah, which I thought was great. Maggie writes, "Go for a classic Game Boy Color. I still have mine." Maggie, I have <laughs> how many Game Boys? I probably have 70, 80 Game Boys. Not everything works though. Does it? Most. They work. Yeah. yeah, they work. There's probably a handful that are broken, but I, at one point, I was going for uh, a collection of all of the colors of Game Boys uh, that were ever released. Now, I'm, I knew in my heart that I probably wouldn't be able to actually complete that collection because there are some very, very rare variants out there, but uh, I have a lot of Game Boys. Yeah, I, I collected them. I stopped collecting them a, a couple of years ago, and like these days, the prices are crazy. Um, I was picking them up when like I could get f- like five Game Boys for like fifty bucks or less. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, like if you got a Game Boy for fifty bucks, it'd be that'd be a good deal. Mm. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I have a pretty solid collection of Game Boys. Uh, but you know what I do use? Let me let me show you. The analog. Yeah. Yeah, that one's great. Do they come in color? Um, not a fun topic, but any bed bug encounters in your travels? Half like not so far, not me at least. Um, there was a real concern in the last patch of travels. Um, I guess because people were talking about it, that was an issue, I guess, and. Uh, yeah, thankfully, no bed bug on that trip. 
that is my biggest fear also because you 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 would bring it home like and it's like a like a bed bug from another part of the world that's that's just not not fun yeah i uh you know i love the game boy so anyways i like portable consoles that's the steam deck as you can see like it's big you know for a computer it's small but and so this plays like real PC games, so it runs your Steam collection. But uh, I prefer to travel with this. There's the analog pocket, which runs real Game Boy games. Uh, this is the first one that they released. So I got this when they, it was like during the pandemic, like they had a pre-order. So I got it. It took a while to get it, and I got it. And then in the fall, they released a color variage, a variant, which is like a green glowing one so this glows in the dark kind of like in if you're into game boy pockets like um they had uh extreme green but that was more of a clear transparent anyways it just reminded me of that so they started releasing color variants like the original game boys there were color variants and then they released this so i bought this because i'm like i have to get the color variant of this thing because i like it and i collect game boy so why not and then like two weeks after this thing launched then they launched even more colors and uh i bought a clear i didn't even open the box yet but uh i bought it oh it didn't open it yeah wow. still so i bought a. they had like a clear black version of this so i bought a third one just so you know that's that's how i roll i so when i when when i say i like portable consoles i mean it i really i really do like them and uh like risa uses this one and I use this one, and this one <laughs> will get used <laughs> eventually. Twice. And then I use this very rarely, but uh, it's 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 in the it's in the collection. Um, uh, Magic Twenty Four, that's cool. Going back to the classics, I also bought a recently new Walkman. Oh, I also collect those things. Uh, as you can see, even behind you, I like there's like a color television here. That's that's my holy grail. Of color TVs uh, right there, the the Brion Vega. Um, so I uh, I like old electronics. I like retro things. Um, uh, Andrew uh, Groves writes, "What's the best games for analog pocket?" Uh, te Tetris. Tetris is the best game. Tetris is the best game ever. Uh, I want to play Tetris again. Yeah, I love it. Um, anyways, look up Analog Pocket. There's, in fact, there's a lot of things you can do with it that are, uh, you know, it, it runs regular Game Boy games, runs Game Boy Advance games. You can get these modules that you can play, like Neo Geo Pocket games or Lynx games or Game Gear games. And then you can put an SD card in and do other things with it as well. But uh, Yeah, that's the best part because, like, if you use the classic Game Boy as opposed to analog like you have to carry all these little yeah. cartridges to yeah play so the games. yeah you can do a lot with these but yeah it they're uh, they're pretty neat and uh hold on. they're well designed is there a charge on that thing yeah uh play cartridge boom and you've got donkey kong there you go look Wait, how do they come in like a colored screen? Yeah, so you can change the colors of the of the screen. Like, oh. so like this is playing it in like Game Boy Light mode. So Game Boy Light was a variant of the Game Boy that only came out in Asia with a backlight. It was a Game Boy Pocket with a backlight. And so, um, hold on, just so you guys can see all the cool things that this thing can do. Uh, actually, I don't remember how to do it, but. There, there are, uh, like, uh, I just don't remember the setting for it right now. Game detail, settings. This is very exciting content, guys, I'm sure. Um, but you can change the background color of the screen to, like, emulate different Game Boy. Like, if you want the original kind of, like, greenish Game Boy, it can do that. It can do Game Boy color. Uh, and then it has its own, like, if, like, they have, like, a red one and all kinds of stuff. But they don't have, like, a, I guess the games don't have, like, a fully vibrant no it, dep it depends on the game oh. like some games have that built in like Game Boy Color games or Game Boy Advance games are, those are all colored um, but yeah uh, where is it uh, I don't remember where it is but you, you can you can change the settings around and it can it can look like different eras of Game Boy mm -hmm. so go and, go and get one of these if you like Game Boys uh, 
Uh, Prince Rose writes, I'm trying to play Pokemon on the Game Boy with my close friend. Well, there you go. Um, there you go. You can you can do it on these things too. It has like it has link cable support also, so you can like actually trade with link cable. Um, uh, right, seventy five writes Super Mario Land Two is a good game. You like Super Mario Land Two on the Game Boy? Six golden coins. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I played that a lot. My sister had that game, so yeah. There you have it. Dad and <coughs> Tetris and. Dr. Mario, for mm. some reason, I remember that a lot. Right. Um, the Raven writes, Base at Gaming Channel, when? Probably never. Probably never. Um, yeah, they're going to talk about old, yeah. old games. Well, people like old games. Um, uh, BD writes, Risa, more skirts on the way? No. There's, there's a... Dress for the spring? Mm hmm. Aloha dress? Yeah. I think that's it. For... I don't think there's any scourge for the fall. No, I don't think so. Sorry, not for another while. All right. We'll keep, we'll keep you posted. Mm. Um, Owen writes Friday night routine, play Pokemon, and watch the live stream. It's a great combination. That's like a great Friday night activities. Yeah. Pedro writes, any funny hotel occurrences from all this travel talk? Funny hotel occurrences. Mm. Um, let's see. I don't know. Uh, nothing that really anything. stands out. Um, hotel. No. I have to say that nothing that really stands out. Um, you know, loud uh, party goers in the next room or whatever, but like nothing, you know, nothing, nothing crazy actually which is perhaps with all this travel it's kind of odd that nothing sensationally weird has happened mm. yeah um i've been in like i'm trying to think i mean this was a nice thing that happened it was a travel like when we were in hawaii last year on our way um back to japan <laughs> they canceled our flight and sent us back to uh honolulu um and they they booked us a hotel and like they booked us like one of the nicest hotels we were ever yeah and because like, we were the first one at the hotel out of everybody who got yeah. the the flight canceled yeah. the the lady at the counter was so was nice very nice yeah. and accommodating and they they gave us like the best room yeah. it like was, it was so good yeah it was very nice it was a marriott i forget exactly which one it was but uh but yeah it's one of the, like i think there's there's like the one on the the waikiki beach and yeah it was that and we got the ocean, beach view. Ocean view and yeah it's fantastic wonderful we got to spend like you know a day there and uh, it was great so uh, shout outs to those nice people. Um, Pierre Morrow writes, any new knives? Um, so it might be really far down the line, but I know that um, that we're working on getting new knives done. It's going to be a very different kind of knife uh, compared to the past knives. It's still going to be Higonokami like, like blades, but the handle is going to be very different. Yeah. So I'm just going to say that much because I, I don't know how um, right how far we're down that road. Yeah, uh, this is a good. This is a Reese has got a good one for this one. Mignon Maxim writes: Any options on electric closet steamers such as the LG Styler or Samsung Air Dresser for sanitizing, refreshing, and uh, dr dry or uh, and de wrinkling uh, clothes? Do these work on heavy cotton or against moths and bed bugs? Now, those closet steamers, I think, are fine. But here's the problem with them. You can put, like, two things in them. They're very small. On it, when I worked at Holt Renfrew, we had closet steamers that you could put on, like, an entire rolling rack worth of clothing in, yeah, and it would sufficient. steam everything, right? <laughs> that way you didn't have to sit there with a the steamer and, and, like, steam every garment before you put it on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now... The steamer to get is the uh, Jiffy steamers. You want to get the Jiffy steamers? This... I believe in that. Although to be fair, last time we were in Paris, like the, the trade show steamer was very yeah, important. that was a good steamer too. But but Jiffy steamer is the the one that you can rely on. You buy it once, you're gonna use it for the rest of your life. It's it does the job very 
you know well and they have like a re- like really different versions of it so like if you don't want to wait like a couple minutes like for me i don't mind waiting a couple minutes do you just turn it all on and walk away mm-hmm. and come back you know a, yeah. a few minutes later and do it there are ones that are like fast working and there are ones that have the plastic head if yeah. you don't want to if you don't want the heavy head i like the metal the, head so yeah, i had to import one. it from america because nobody in japan has that like metal head yeah. steamer this is a professional quality steamer yeah um this is what you want you know you might I don't, to me this is a good price um it might be a big price for some people for just a steamer, but this will last forever. It's industrial quality. It is a very high quality. Yeah. Um, I used to use like ones that are like kind of not port- portable, but it wasn't like a standing, you know, fixture. Um, and it just it it was it was fine. Like uh, it was uh, what was that brand called? T Fal. T Fal. Yeah. And they, they do make a good one, but it, it's it's just the like... The water tank is this big. Yeah, and then you're carrying the water. Yeah. So, like, it's equally heavy, if not more, yeah. than these, like, even the metalhead ones. And, again, like, metalhead, like, is heavier. But I feel like, I, I think I like the metal. It's yeah. just, like, it feels like it's going to last forever. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, like, the, if you don't like the, the weight, then you can get the plastic head. Yeah. And um, the tank here is huge. Like, yeah. you can put and a lot of water in here, so you can steam a lot of stuff. Yeah. And the steam gets, it steams, it, it, it gets the steaming level fast, and the, the, the consistent flow of heavy steam gets wrinkles out of everything. Yeah. And then they do have, like, if you have room for it, they do have, like, the, the attachment um, for different ones. But, like, they also do have an attachment that is, like, a board, like, ironing board, standing ironing board. Mm. So, like, you, you don't even need an iron at this point. If you have to metal head and then, like, just do... do but- against the board it. like it, it, it's an iron yeah too. so so go look at the Jiffy J-I-F-F-Y Jiffy brand of steamers funny um, thing when I went to the Jiffy website like go now uh, I that need to one, find the American one. one yeah here but it's oh yeah it is and then like on the main page mm-hmm. like the I think this it's, is it a slideshow the main page? No. Uh, no. Like, when I went there, uh, when I was, like, buying it, like, the first slide was, like, a, a, a picture of a retailer using it in the store. And in that store, um, Naked and Famous jeans were showing. No, oh, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Wait, what yeah. did I do? Clothing steamers. Pro-line clothing steamers. So, yeah, th- this is... Oh, here. Oh. Yeah, this is Naked and Famous Jeans. Oh, yeah, you can see it right there. There's some, some uh, stretch salvage uh, old, in the background. Old yeah, there's some old uh, yeah. Naked and Famous pocket flashers here. That's great. So there you can see, trusted by professionals and tough enough uh, from even us. I, I, we use this at Tate & Yoko. We use it in our home. Uh, this can steam jeans beautifully. Uh, I used it on my Dirty Fade just the other day. Um, that's the Japanese price, which isn't as good as the American price, but I, that's a different model anyways. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're in America, go on uh, go on uh, Amazon or even here, where to buy. Get a Jiffy steamer. Tw- save 25% off with factory refurbished. Click for details. There you go. <laughs> um, they can obviously tell that I'm in this part of the world, but uh, uh, get a Jiffy steamer. That's That's the one. Don't bother with those closets. To me, they're expensive, and they don't they don't steam a lot of stuff. That's the problem. Like they're very narrow. You could put like a a jacket in there. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, the the benefit is that you don't have to do it. Like you just have to put it in there and press the button. That's true. But it is a one thing, unless you have like a basement where you just you know and, like you can just have things like that like it, it's just another fixture in your home. Although I mean, like the the steamer is big too, but it's just. You know, it to me feels like a furniture or like a kind of like another refrigerator that, you know, doesn't do too much, too many things. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. Um, Magic 24 writes, how hard is it? How hard is it actually for a vegetarian in Japan? Um, 
I don't think it's that hard. I don't think, think it's, it's that hard. hard, to be honest. Like, it, it's... There are, you know, just like the rest of the world, it's not maybe to the degree of, like, North America, but there are, like, a lot of newer vegetarian restaurants. Yeah. And there's also, like... You know, there's a decent amount of, like, um, Indian uh, restaurants yeah. that have, like, completely vegetarian yeah. meals. And then, you know, there's just, in general, there's a lot of vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> Things yeah. that don't use yeah. meat in our, in our yeah. diet. And so. it also depends on, like, how far veg- Some so I find sometimes vegetarians will eat fish. Depends that's, on... That's pes- that's pesca. Pes- 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 that's a pesca. That's a pesca. That's a I never know the difference be- between... The the, the 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 people who only eat fish and not meat, and the religious, you know, the Christian, Pes- pescatarian. Pescatarian. Is that how you say it? Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Okay. Is the that's the religion. Christian, yeah. That's the Christians. And then pescatarian is the the people who eat fish. Okay. Well, anyways, they're, they're, anyways they're, um, yeah, vegetarian, vegan. Mm, Vegan might be hard. I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Dead Sea Genesis writes, the seaweed is radioactive from Fukushima. Uh, Maybe, (laughs) but if we've learned nothing from Marvel Comics is that radiation makes you stronger. stronger. Uh, You develop superpowers, mutant powers. It's all all good. Uh, So don't Um, don't be worried about that uh, radioactive Fukushima seaweed. Take it in stride. Uh... You'll, you'll probably develop some cool features uh, down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, Rice W5. I heard meat was banned in Japan for many, many centuries in the past. Uh, maybe. There were times that we didn't eat meat. Like, even in, like, current days, I think Buddhism, like, Buddhist monks, mm. did, I don't think they eat meat. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it, we, we do eat meat. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Matteo Dondi, I'm Italian, so I'm a pastafarian. Uh, yeah, this is true. The flying spaghetti monster should be revered in uh, in all its forms. So, uh, salute to you, my pastafarian brother. If pastafarian was the religion to appreciate pasta, dishes, it is. It is. If you guys don't know about pasta farming, no, I know, but it's not the, the the religion to appreciate pasta food. It's just that to 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 the the pasta guy, pasta monster, is the the ultimate power. Yeah. So it's not the same thing. But it, but it, it but he is. I mean, guys, let's 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 you know give praise to our Lord and Savior, the pasta flying spaghetti Did they monster. Eat pasta a lot. This no, it's. I think you actually need to eat pasta to praise him. I'm not up on my uh, my pastafarianism. So anyhow, uh, all I can say is because if that's the case, I I, I can pa- see myself. Pa- pasta is good. It's good for you. Uh, may your noodle never be overcooked. I, I I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. I'm not very strict on that. Actually, no. I don't. No. I don't care. If- <laughs> All hail the flying spaghetti monster, David Dixon writes. That's true. We should. Um, uh, touched by his noodly appendage. Uh, pasta denim drop when? Well, if you think about it, all denim is made with all these noodly fibers that come together to, make, yarns. to yeah. make this uh, beautiful fabric. Yarns that uh, are al dente because the core is a different color than yeah. the outside. Um <laughs> Pedro writes, I came here for the jeans and stayed for the random stuff this stream brings. It, there's going to be a lot of random in these streams. That's for sure. We're here to answer your questions live, but you guys know you can get me on some kind of side rant very, very easily. Uh, BD writes, my lord and savior is warp and weft. Mm-hmm. In Japanese, Tate and Yoko. Mm-hmm. And in English, mispronunciation, Tate and Yoko. Mm-hmm. Tate and Yoko. Um, some people think I'm Tate and that Risa is Yoko. And I don't deny it whenever it happens. <laughs> I don't know. It just came randomly yeah. from random people yeah. who would Like when you'd be in the me. store? Yeah. Are you Yoko? And I, yeah. I don't think anybody's asking no, no, no. anybody if they were Tate. But I think it's because, like, you know, I was there and, yeah. like... And I'm Asian. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was that was how it, it 
came to people's mind. I'm not offended, but it's kind of a funny idea now that like it's like yes, it is two names. Yeah, Tate. Tate and, and Yoko. Yoko. Yeah, it's uh it, right. I call it Tate because sometimes people, a lot of people call it Tate, and so uh, but yeah, it's it's pronounced Tate. Um, in uh, here's some random video game knowledge. So in uh, in uh, uh, space shooter type games like uh, you know R Type or uh, Galaxian, Space Invaders, that kind of thing, uh, uh, Ikaruga, like you know more Dozon Pachi, like more 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 uh, modern ones, um, they they're played on a four by three monitor, but the preference is to turn the monitor on its side, and they call it and in and, and it's called Tate mode. Uh, but in the West, sometimes on like gamer channels, they call it Tate mode, and I'm like, <laughs> it's Tate, Tate. It's confusing. Yeah, now. it's confusing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, put it in Tate mode, everybody. Turn your TV sideways. And just as a side yeah. note, if you didn't know, Yoko and Yoko are different, different or like it's not like a, a, a same pronunciation meaning different two different things. It's it's a different pronunciation. It's it's. Yeah. Different words. Right. Uh, so, what, what? Some Japanese lessons for us then. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Warp, Tate, Yoko, Weft. But it also means horizontal, vertical. Well, so like Sorry, actually, the, the warp and weft yeah. is Tate ito, Yoko ito. So ito is the the yarn. Okay. Part of the, that. But in in the industry, like when you're talking about denim or like any kind of, you know, fabrics, like we know what like tate means because yeah. you're talking about tate, tate ito. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. yeah. Tate, yoko. yoko. Yeah. Vertical, horizontal. Vertical. Yeah. yeah. It goes with anything. Yeah. Yeah. It can, it can be anything. It can be anything. Um, okay. Uh, Tova Cobra writes, we should do a Japanese word of the day each week. Okay, we had two words today. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, cool. right. now you know. Next week we'll have a new another segment. Next week with... we can go to go right on that. Oh right, there you go. Up and down. Well, uh, everybody, do your homework <laughs> and see uh, if you can look it up, and then we'll do a little uh, Japanese language uh, lesson for everybody. And I'll probably learn a little thing too because <laughs> yeah. uh, my Japanese is terrible, terrible by the way. Um, okay. Uh, 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 Hess Law writes, I got a 30 waist and got a 30 weird guy jean. Is it too big? I heard these jeans tend to run big. Um, okay, there's a lot to unpack in that mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Good question. You've got a 30 waist. What do you mean when you say you have a 30 waist? Do you normally wear size 30 jeans or did you actually go and measure your waist? Some people don't know that the size of their jeans... That tag size doesn't actually correlate to the actual waist measurement of that jean. Most jeans are going to be a little bit bigger than the size that it indicates on that jean. Uh, so sometimes people come to us and they're like, well, I'm a size 30. And so let's go over to the measurement guide. And this is where a lot of mistakes happen. Um, uh, Let's go to tateyoko.com and let's just use like the spring garden salvage for example. Um, so somebody might say to me, oh, I'm a size 30. And then they'll go to Tate and Yoko and they'll look in that measurement guide. So I've just brought up the uh, spring garden salvage weird guy, for example. And they'll say, well, I'm a size 30 um, and uh, what size should I get? Um, or what they'll they'll maybe mistakenly do is presume that they're because they wear a size thirty that's what their waist measures, and then they go and they buy the size twenty eight because they see the tag size of size twenty eight has a waist measurement of thirty. But what the reality of most situations is is that if you wear a size thirty, your waist measurement comes out to be a thirty two, right? Mm -hmm. the, and so. Sometimes people will mistakenly buy the smaller size because they presume that their waist, their the the waist measurement of their jeans correlates to the tag size of their jeans. Not the case. So um, I can see uh, 
Hess law writes, I measure 30. Well, if you measure 30, then you should find something that has a 30 waist measurement. But, but, but I don't even recommend that. What you should do is measure your jeans. Take the jeans that you wear out, presuming that they fit you well, and do the measurements. Do the measurements the same way that we do. And we have a video that explains our measurement guide. And then we also have uh, the measurement guide instructions here um, as well. So follow to the T what we do. Waistband, front and back, uh, parallel with one another. Measure from you know this exact point on your jeans when you're doing the front and the back rise and, and your, your thigh measurement as well. Measure the jeans that you own. Then you compare those measurements to the measurement guide. So your body may measure a 30, but your jeans that you wear, maybe they're actually, uh, they measure waist-wise a 31, and that feels comfortable on you. So what you want is what feels comfortable on you. Mm -hmm. So you would be looking for something that might have a 31-inch waist measurement, which would you know take you to a size 29. So that's the way to do it. Measure your garments, don't measure your body. Um, because the way garments feel on you are going to be different than what you measure. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you want to have a little bit of room between you and the garment because mm -hmm. that garment's got to move on you. When so, you sit down, yeah. it actually adds like at least an inch to your your measurements here. So it, that's that's why you need the room. Yeah. But but also, like when you say you measure your waist like you're not always the same measurement throughout your torso yeah and this is why it gets a little confusing because like your to like cuz you can't really compare wherever your waist is which is around your um, belly button of most people but it it is it is sometimes not where the waistband falls yeah. and you know this is a bigger problem for for women obviously but for even for men like it just if it doesn't sit where like you measure then that that measurement means almost nothing so so yeah like the always always the best way is to measure the genes that you have so that you can take in what 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 they just said you can take in the extra room you probably need in the pants and also probably likely that you're going to be wearing your pants at the same part of your torso yeah um so just that's that's just always the best way to, do, to yeah. handle it yeah absolutely <laughs> Um, and, and people sometimes get like mad at us. It's like, what? Why is like my pants measurements better than my own body measurements? Like that's how the the tailor tailor suits and blah 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 and stuff. But tailor can measure you right. and then make the the, suit the garment to fit you to fit right. you. Whereas right. like what we're doing right. is we already made the jeans. Yeah. We're figuring out how to fit that, and you're the only one who can do it. Right. But you're also not the professional. You don't know, you know, where to measure. Right. So, uh, yeah. That's why this is the best way. And we've had years of experience yeah. and we figured out this is literally the best way. Yeah. There's no better way. This is it. It's and, not and, a full proof. Yeah, right. But no. And like Douglas here writes, I measured my waist at 32, bought a 31 naked and famous off Amazon. Their chart said 33. But Tati and Yoko listed the 31 as a 34. I was swimming and I had to return them. Trust Tati and Yoko, not Amazon. That's the thing. On Tati and Yoko, we give you actual measurements of every garment. Every garment that comes through our building, we provide actual measurement charts for them, not generic charts. Other websites, big retailers, they're going to put generic charts up. It, without one poeta writes, uh, belt never fails indeed. But um, I don't know, I got sidetracked there. The big websites, they are just not equipped the same way we are we're, we're to deal with selling jeans. Mm -hmm. they're, I would say that because we're a lot more specialized in what we do, we can take the time and we understand how it is necessary to sell these jeans to you. Big retailers, maybe like a department store, for example, they're used to people coming into the store and trying things on. Like 
you know, to me, I feel like their online store is oftentimes just an afterthought. It's like, sell it. We've got this, you know, return policy. Uh, you know, but let a, exactly let let the customer it. sort it yeah, out. Yeah, that's right? exactly it. They're willing to like offer free returns just so that they don't have to do that for each and every single product, which I understand. Like there was sometimes, you know, they have bazillion products and they can't, they don't have the resources to do that for each item. For us, we don't offer a free return, but instead we offer a way for you to figure that out yeah. um, ahead of time. So I, I, we really want to like encourage customers to just kind of consider that before you order yeah. anything online, you know, it's just like, and, and, and some people don't want to measure and they just want to like try Roll everything the on and then return it, which is fine. But it, it's like your expectation is that then you, you do need to shop at, you know, a big retailer. Yeah. So it's yeah. a, it's a give and take. Like you, you might not get the perfect information off their website, but that's fine because you can return it for free. Whereas here you do get a very good information and we help you if you're confused yeah. or you know you need yeah. help. We're always here to help right. ahead of time before you make the purchase. I want you to get the jeans the first time fitting. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to go through this uh, song and dance where you're, you buy a bunch of jeans and you try them on and they don't fit. You send them back. You got to get... That's the absolute worst way to sell jeans. Those guys do it and guess what? They suck at selling jeans. We're very good at selling jeans because we give you the information so that you can make the most educated choice when it comes to making your purchase. We're available here on the live stream. We're available on phone call. We're available email. You can contact us anyway if you're not sure how to size for your jeans. And as a result, our return rates are very low. And now Dead Sea Genesis has a point. Naked Famous will give you store credit for your returns. Right. We don't do, when you make a purchase from us, and I would say that a lot of independent retail is the same way. You know, we're not, we're not, uh, uh, I, we do this for a very specific reason. You know, we're not renting out clothes. I do not want to get into the business of you bought 10, you, you tried on 10, you sent us back 10. When you send us, that is the absolute worst way to do retail. It sucks for the customer. It sucks for us on our end. It's just going to make everything more expensive and it's not going to make anything better for you. When we get 10 jeans back, it means we have to inspect and go through 10 pairs of jeans and make sure that they're all in saleable condition, that all the tags are on the right spot. It's nonsense. It's crazy. That's a lot of work to do. And if you, you open the floodgates for that, all you're going to do is create hardship for your customers. Customer, you, 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 maybe some of you would feel like it's a little bit more comfortable, but you know, and I know, that a lot of people are just going to take advantage of this situation and just, just constantly buy and return, buy and return, buy and return. I don't want to, I don't want to create an environment like that. If you want to make a purchase, We've got the information for you right here. If you're not sure about it, contact us. We'll be happy to help you through the process. But if you want to go through this rigmarole of trying and returning, trying and returning, I'm not interested in that. That's not the kind of company that we want to build. That's not the type of shopping environment we want to make. You're, you, you know, we'll, we'll make the smart purchase, get the gene fitting right the first time. When I worked in retail, in the store, there's absolutely nothing worse than sending a customer in a change room with five or six pairs of jeans to, to try on. My aim in the store was always within two jeans to have him in the right fit. As a professional denim salesman, I want him out the first time in the right fit. I should, from what I can tell, look at the person based on what they tell me or whatever advice I give them, send them to the change room with the right fit. I can usually spot your size. I can look at you, you're a 34, you need this inseam, this fit is gonna fit you right. I know my inventory, I know my fabrics, I know how they're gonna wear on you. Send them into the change room, they come out, they're ecstatic. You know, maybe we have to change a little bit of a size or maybe they're like, well, this might be a little bit too slim, I'd like something a little bit wider. No problem, let's change it up will get you into the right fit. But a customer, and a, maybe people have, here have gone through this experience before, you know, maybe you go into like a, a big box retailer, you know, nobody's there to help you. You just go into that change room with all that stuff. It just becomes overwhelming. And it is, it is a terrible experience. So uh, 
to, to, to recreate that terrible experience at home where you get this big old box of clothes that you got to try on, it's the worst. How about you get the package and you open it up, you put them on, they fit the first time and you can enjoy them right away. To me, that's a much better experience for everybody. So that's the kind of experience we're trying to create. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. That's one of my favorite topics. Um, uh, uh, Douglas writes, thinking about hopping on a plane and hitting the naked and famous New York City store. Haha, ha, never been to New York City and Sweeney Todd on Broadway. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, New York City is a very accessible 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 city to most of you in North America. Yeah. In, in, I'm sure I'm sure there's flight deals all across America to get mm -hmm. to New York. Uh, the only the also only problem is, oh, yeah, right. The, the, the hotels are expensive. That's true. The hotels are expensive. Sometimes but, you gotta yeah. you gotta live. Yeah, so. I guess you gotta live it up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, Cathedral Ring. My first time with Nathan Famous. I actually went to a retailer so I could check out the fits. From there, it was about the measurements uh, of the fit I knew worked. Bingo. Perfect. That, that's that's a lot of folks as well. Juan uh, Puedo writes, facts. I went through multiple videos and emailed customer service. It was smooth sailing from there. Mm. Yeah. Your yeah. first time with us, maybe it'll be a little confusing. I understand that. We're going to be here to help you, you know, yeah. to, 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 to get you there. Um, yeah, and we, it, it does it does carry on to other things, you know, like if, if you want to buy something else on the internet under the time, like, you know, you, you, you might have more better idea of how you need to shop online that, that gives you the right size. So it, it is a good information for obviously to, to buy jeans, but in, in a lot of things. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, measurements. Measurements are key. If you have to have the measurements, if they're not yeah. there, you're gonna have a bad time. If you're a retailer without measurements, if you're a retailer watching this, get the measurements up. Your customers yeah. want the measurements. Otherwise, you're just gonna be dealing with returns and and sour customers. Yeah. They want to be able to make that. They want to buy from you. And when when somebody makes a purchase, they want. They're not waste. They don't want to waste their time. And they don't. They certainly don't want to waste your time. So, you know, have the measurements up. Um. Alex, uh, sorry? No, I just oh. wanted to answer yeah, one go question. Ahead. That was, I, are you moving on from the sizing? No, no, go ahead. No, no, I, are you moving on from the sizing? Because it, it had nothing to do with sizing. Let, let's move on. Okay, yeah. so let's just go back. Um, oh, it was Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus is here. Jesus Christ we asked, had... where are the vulgar four? Vulgars four. Jesus is asking. Jesus is asking. Things. So you know what? We made a gene that Jesus would be very happy with. Mm. So it's in the works. Yeah. Um, now, we've done the vulgar denim. We've done with a lot of naughty little swear words here. We've done the Raised by Wolves edition. We did mm -hmm. the La Belle Provence, the the French um, the French cuss word edition that we have exclusive at uh, Tate Yoko Montreal, our in-store gene. We have a gene coming for spring 25. Spring 25. Yeah, we're just working on it now. The love and peace salvage. We're finally doing it. We're finally doing it. No more naughty words. Nice words. Opposite of vulgar. Opposite of vulgar. We're going to promote love and peace and prosperity and all the nice things. Just like Jesus did. Just like Jesus did. And the flying spaghetti monster. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. Um... So just like Jesus, we're going to promote love and peace and harmony, and it's coming. So for those people who want a positive message on their denim, we're going to put it out there. And we're going to see once and for all this peace sell. We'll find out. I, I like this denim. We, we, we recently just designed the uh, text for the selvage. Um, so it's, it's coming. It's going to be the vulgar selvage base. That same fabric, but now with uh, peace and love on the selvage ID. Which is a great fading base. Yeah, it We've fades seen beautifully. a lot of nice yeah. fades on that. And it'll have its own special edition leather patch, which is being designed right now. I'm actually waiting uh, to get some uh, updates from the artist, but uh, I think it's going to come out beautifully. Uh, and so, yeah, it's going to be all about the power of positivity and love uh, for 
the next vulgar salvage, which we won't call vulgar at all. We will we'll have to have a new name for it. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what's a coming. Um, uh, Christopher Colon writes, my very first naked and famous jeans were Elephant 12 purchased at the New York City store last September, heading back in a month for my second visit. Nice. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we, we, we'd love to see you there. Uh, unfortunately, Reese and I won't be there because we're vi- there r- rarely. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, next month. Anyway, I don't know. We'll, I'm not sure when the next time we'll be in New York or America, but we'll definitely keep you posted. And uh, if we are in the New York store, we'll uh, do some kind of gala like last time. Gala? A gala. Oh, yeah, everyone came fancy. out with their best denim outfits. <laughs> it's a denim gala, you know. It was wonderful. Um, uh, uh, Chief Miggy writes, restock Raised by Wolves 15s. The 15-year 15 mm. anniversary. Mm, probably not. I mean, unless, again, some random role shows up in the warehouse. Uh, but I think I think we, we must yeah. have used all of that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be definitely happy to work with Raised by Wolves. Again, you know, we've done some collaborations with them in the past, and they're, they're great friends of ours from uh, the great state of Ontario. Now they used to be Quebec based, but they are on uh, Ottawa, Ottawa based uh, Can- Canadian uh, Canadian fellows. Um, we saw them in uh, New York. Mm-hmm. They came they to the came they to came, our gala. They came to the gala. <laughs> um, uh, uh, a cathedral ring writes, "It's a new era. It's time to put a topless male on the leather patch." Equality guy. Well, 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 well. well. Cathedral you. ring. <laughs> You're a little late to the parte, so to speak, uh, because we do have the brute patch, and he is a handsome fellow, and he's just showing, he's just exuding macho charisma here, and so he's got muscles, he's got the facial hair, of course, he's got the cigar, he's puffing smoke in your face, and we've got Naked and Famous right here. So if you want the mountain of muscles called the brute, he is available for your leather patch customization needs on Tate and Yoko. Just head over to the bottom. You will see leather patch and customization, and uh, you can see what options we have for you. Uh, we have also a, a minimalistic patch here as well if you want something that's a little bit uh, cleaner. Um, but we do have that, and then... Uh, you got to go to the leather patch yeah. Um, yeah. Section. section. There's a button here somewhere. Leather pa- custom leather patch options. Yeah, and you can go from other ways too. Yeah. But so this is the current offering right now yeah. available for any um, any jeans that you buy. Yeah. So just add these to cart with your uh, purchase, and then you can transform any jean into a custom one with a leather patch option of your choice. There's some leather patch options here that are you know, haven't been made available on jeans before or only maybe on one style or one model. So uh, if you think that your jeans would look better with an, uh, a different leather patch, we've got you covered. Shell Cordovan, we might need to uh, we might, might I need know. To it's been now for a while, yeah. but, you know. Yeah, thick, get the thick bison is a beautiful, beautiful leather patch. And we have two vegan patch options here in the Tragic Blonde, the vegan apple leather, and then this is the uh, like the cardboard style patch. Um, that is also the eel skin too. Still. Oh yeah, the eel skin. This is a beauty, a beauty. This yeah. one right here. Do you see that? Do you see that? That it's like the eel yeah. Uh, spine. Yeah. It's so really cool. A very cool patch uh, here as well. So uh, basically, you buy a jean, you add one of these to your cart, and then uh, you you can. Uh, request how we sew it now for thicker leather patches like a bison patch for example we can do top and bottom stitching but sewing thicker leather patches top and bottom will be done at your own risk we recommend for thicker patches sew all around so we do the stitching all the way around the patch that really secures them Top and bottom on the thick ones, they're not as secure. We'll do it. If you want it, we'll do it. But it, you know, if it if it comes apart after a while, that's uh that's on you to get repaired. We're not gonna cover that one for you. 
Um, so be aware of that. But yeah, we can customize any gene. Uh, if you if you like, for example, I had a, uh, had a customer the other day saying that they picked up a pair of uh, classics. It was a guy, and he's like, "Oh, the classics, you know, they fit. They're great." It's like the only problem for me is that the leather patch is too small. I'm like, "Yeah, just, you could have you could customize it, put on the big leather patch, and uh, and there you go." Um, BD writes, "I have an eel skin leather patch on his heart and soft, and it's so awesome." There you go. Yeah, customize that patch. Enjoy it. Enjoy the brute. Uh, the brute mm-hmm. patch. He's got he's got all the muscles, um, just like me. No, it's like Garrett. I think uh, maybe we should get Garrett posed in brute fashion. Maybe we should get a Garrett patch. Garrett patch. That's it. Um, uh, Pedro writes. I have my mom's uh, alter all my patches so they are pass through, <laughs> even on my elephants, and they stay put. That's well, great. there you go. A little, a little extra uh, elbow grease uh, involved with that one. Uh, Topher Cover writes a Garrett patch would be hilarious. Yeah. All right, Garrett. Would it be hilarious? It'd be oh, great. It would be great. It'd, it'd be would great. Be awesome. I think it'd be f- fantastic. Um, uh, <laughs> it would just be funny if I just like made all of the Tatanyoko voice. <laughs> that'd be cool it's like you get a, a terry much. patch yeah, yeah. <laughs> um uh okay um uh this is a i don't know actually maybe somebody in the audience might know but this art artist writes hey do you have any recommendations for brands for a nice silver chain i, I the only silver people i know are good art hollywood Mm. Um, they make some nice stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't wear necklaces personally, um, but the good art jewelry is pretty handsome looking. I have to say, um, it's maybe not for everybody, but uh, I, I think it looks pretty cool. Let's let's check it out. Uh, necklaces. There you go. Look at those. Woo. That's a lot of that's a lot of cannoli. Um, that's a lot of cannoli. Okay, so if you're looking for a good recommendation, get this one. Uh, be- it's c- clearly beautiful. 18 karat yellow gold, double A something. It's got some pretty gems in there. Uh, 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 you want it silver? Maybe they have a, a silver version of that. Um, sure. Anyhow, shop shop from these guys. They have nice things. Mm. Yeah, and they're very rugged looking this is cool right mm. yeah that's pretty nice <laughs> just like old key, key yeah chain i like it style. that's cool yeah they have really nice stuff um uh there you go look at that Woo! handsome so there you have it 22 karat yellow gold inquire inquiries please contact them but uh that's it. That's that's my recommendation for jewelry. Hmm. Um, uh, Pedro writes fourteen stacks. Sure, I could afford that. Yeah, we totally no problem. Uh, yeah, just don't pay for your rent for like the next ten months. There you go. It's, it's either the necklace for life or no rent. Uh, uh, Juan Poeta writes, "What glasses are you wearing, Bayzad?" These are Effector. It's a Japanese brand called Effector, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, uh, Chief Mickey, that's a silver jewelry company on Tate and Yoko. Uh, which one? Munka. Munka. Mm. Yeah, Munka no, is mostly do. accessories like yeah, pins. pins. Yeah. Pins. Um, not too much. Uh, not too much um, jewelry. Jewelry. They have some bracelets and things here and there, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I also found this um, like random brand recently, and I've just been like, I, I I don't know this person or these people, and I just I don't know. I'm just kind of blasting it to to the world. But uh, it's called North Works, and it's a Japanese brand. But they do make um, like things out of like old American coins, and some of them are like silver, like they use like old silver coins to make accessories and stuff and this is like oh, from yeah, them yeah. but 
like it's kind of clever because they they keep like for instance like this my little like earring here i thought you know just these like ridges i don't know if you can see oh, put it up there but these ridges actually oh it's probably you very hard to see yeah. difficult to see maybe yeah. i can find it on the website yeah the ridges comes from like the ridge of the like coin you know the outer like part of the coin and a, a lot of like i mean it's all kind of like um ah uh, here this is it right 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 yeah so yeah and and so it's just the like price the, is reasonable yeah right and um uh, i think this is 9 to 5 silver but it's you know, one of those things where it's just kind of like, oh, I didn't know. I thought this ridge was just the design, but then when when I found out it was coming from like just the the edges of the coin, like it kind of makes, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. Look, they've yeah. got the coins here. Yeah, with the... it's a little bit more like. Yeah, and it's a lot more cheap. affordable. Le yeah, a little bit more than twelve thousand. Like, well, I mean, it's not gold. <laughs> it's not gold. Uh, that's true. And I mean, and not everything is like is silver either. Like uh -huh. they, they use like different materials. But the the point is that they they like they use coins to make. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really neat. Old like this yeah. continued antique coins and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, and I like they're they're destroying money, so it's got a, a legal aspect to it. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so there you go. So North Works Japan. Um, look them up, and they probably sell around the world. Mm. Uh, these are cool. Yeah. Yeah, really cute. really neat stuff. There you have it. Okay, so there, there's a couple of jewelry recommendations. Mine, a little bit up there. A little Reci bit more aspirational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, my recommendation is always down to earth. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, Stephen writes, who do I have to harass to get 30 plus ounce denim? Uh, Brandon, in fact, here's his Instagram. Uh, <laughs> let's go right over to Brandon's Instagram. Send him uh, a couple of messages and just say, "Hey, when is that thirty? When is that forty ounce denim coming?" Uh, he would love to hear from you. Uh, so just uh, right here, B Spark. That's Brandon, the boss, the owner, founder, designer, naked and famous denim. Uh, check him out. He's he'll he'll love to hear from you. Uh, with regards to when and where the 40 ounce denim is coming. Uh, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we got to motivate him. Yeah, we got to motivate him. If yeah. he's motivated, I think my words have, uh, they're filtered out now. Like if I say those words, it, like his brain does an opposite waveform mm -hmm. and it just, whoop, you know, gone. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. he'll listen to fresh new voices, probably. Let's see. Um, uh, uh, Mac McCult writes, picked up my blue owl left hand tool, black by black, weird guy, very excited, fantastic gene. Thank you. Very and good. I hope you enjoy them very much. Um, Cathedral Ring, uh, I guess somebody was asking about uh, underwear recommendations. Uh, and then Cathedral Ring respond responded, I put in the request for circular knit banana hammocks, but Wonder Looper hasn't replied to my emails. Not sure why. They're called banana slings. Okay, you're using the wrong term. Banana slings. Uh, it sounds much sexier that way. Um, but yeah, it's uh, they're gonna be really expensive. So yeah, if you thought those good art Hollywood um, necklaces were pricey, Wonder Looper banana slings. I, no, look, I'm not going to judge most of you, but I don't think you can afford them. Hmm. It's just, it's just, it's going to be like that. So, uh, and it's going to be an invite only type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you're a male uh, exotic dancer with, with the, the, the cheese to spend on a high quality banana sling, send me a message. We'll, we'll make that happen. Um, uh, uh, BD writes, can you talk about your article and Tate and Yoko staff in the Indigo Zine? Saw some posts online. Did we show it off? We might have, but uh, we can show it off again. Some people may have missed that, but uh, we are featured in the 
inaugural issue of Indigo Zine. It's a, it's like a zine here, a little uh, magazine, free it's magazine free zine. that uh, some of our friends put together. It's all about denim and denim related uh, things and things that are adjacent to uh, to the yeah. denim world. Um, and they have like you know just cultural thing, not just yeah. jeans. You know these guys doing music. This guy's, you know, have like his own atelier. Yeah. Street snaps. Yeah. And Snip, oh snap. wait, Look, what? We've got some some naked and famous New York and Tate and Yoko you employees featured on this yeah. page. We've got the New York City staff up here, and of course, many of you guys know these handsome gentlemen from the uh, this week at Tate and Yoko show, a wonderful show we have here on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've got uh, Sally Fox, the professor. Of brown con and and you recognize these two people here we did a, a nice interview with sally yeah. fox to talk oh, about I'm literally her wonderful sitting creation. just like yeah. this right now that's that's how it looks <laughs> that's an art studio setup yeah and uh, then they got featured like some a page yeah wonder looper fox fiber fox stuff fiber which we're, we're wearing right now actually mm -hmm. and uh yeah and a bunch of different interesting yeah. leather art ice cream yeah what everybody likes yeah. So we sent a handful of these to uh, Tate and Yoko and to um, New York City. Uh, now there's not a lot, like there's no. there's a handful of them. So yeah. I think what they'll do at like this week at Tate and Yoko, maybe they'll make a, a special uh, like you know whatever the word is. Maybe we'll uh, pick out a couple of those people and send uh, some copies out too if you're interested yeah. in these. Well, we were sending some to New York store too, I think. Yeah. So yeah, um, if you were. In New York, maybe you stop by, take a look. Yeah. It's all in Japanese, uh, yeah. but uh, these guys, wait, which guys? Yeah. These guys, these two are the, 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 the guys who, who's doing the, the magazine. I'm just not good at this. But they also have a podcast, which yeah. we appear a couple times. Yeah, on, So which is in Japanese, except for my English, which Risa then translates into Japanese. Uh, but yeah, very Japanese, but anyhow, uh, check it out. Yeah. Uh, Google Translate works magnificently okay um all right well with all that said let's hit that like button everybody mm. let's hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel i haven't asked many times this live stream so yeah. this is this i'm taking this moment right now right here to ask you guys to gently tap the like button because we are getting into the magical part of this live stream and that is snack time okay. snack time is coming up and we've got something potentially gross what are we doing today potato milk okay we're doing potato milk uh we've this was supposed to be last week's but we found pancake tea um milk tea. pancake milk tea last week so yeah a lot of milk products so we're gonna try potato milk we bought this uh a while ago so it's probably still good mm -hmm. we're gonna find out and you guys are gonna find out with us um, uh, BD writes I hope it smells earthy well it may I think it's it's sweet potato milk um, we're gonna find out um, that's okay you're allowed to use the same glass um, yeah, we gotta show uh, show, show, show this off. So, um, Cathedral Ring writes, somebody call the authorities, they've gone too far. This is not potato as in like potato. This is a sweet potato milk. Yes. So, sweet. that sounds a little better. Probably. Than potato yeah. milk, I feel. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, it is... Did you say that this was the same people who made the disgusting buttermilk? buttermilk? Yeah, they so made... I have no hope for this. No. My very expectations are very low. Um, the Raven with a great comment. I never realized potatoes created milk for their young. They do. They do. Um, uh, I didn't know you could milk potatoes. Well, okay. You guys... Again, this is potato and milk yeah there's an and there's an and there in so. english too it even says po sweet potato and milk yeah um so. so i expect this to be gross 
I'm yeah, not... I have no hope. After the buttermilk incident, it looks like just... the buttermilk. So yeah, it's just, I'm it looks this. like eggnog. It's very yellow, mm -hmm. custard color. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, it doesn't smell smell like, good. It, it, it smells like uh, sweet potato like snacks. Yeah. Yaki emo. No. Yeah. yeah. Yaki Artificial emo. sweet yeah. potato. Oh, this is like. It's infinitely better. Better than buttermilk. It is not. It's not great. It's not great. It is not something that. It tastes like a lot of sugar. It tastes like a hint of sweet potato, um, and sugar, wa and watered down milk. Yeah, skim milk. Yeah, it's a very light milk taste. Like the sugar is stabbing my tongue, and then yeah, a little bit of like sweet potato flavoring on top. Not great. Like it tastes like I've had like sweet potato like flavored candies mm. and like you know artificial snacks tastes like that it's not bad it's not like disgusting mm. like the buttermilk was insane like, yeah that disgusting. was terrible i just uh, say like, mushy monkey right sounds like taro boba tea mm, i've no that's a lot more s smoother tasting and and this the yes, i feel the flavors I, are very distinct it doesn't really blend well I can taste the milk, I can taste the sugar, and I can taste the potato all separately. But I can see your point. I think if there's boba in it, it feels more like a dessert, mm. and maybe that's not bad. Just as a like liquid drink, mm. yeah. I, I do. That, I, I see. I see yeah. where this is. This can be better. De Dead Sea Genesis. Stick to designing jeans. Your snack choices are disgusting. Well, guess what? Disgusting snacks keeps you tuned in and uh, it's not for our pleasure it's for your pleasure if we uh, chose the best snacks which we know of yeah, we're yeah. very good at choosing snacks yeah. by the way i like picking and it will be yeah. just this yeah. so boring to you I, guys. I like i like weird i want to try things so sometimes you got to try the weird and the unusual which luckily here in japan they have an abundance of so we're going to keep it we're going to keep it going whether it's gross or not gross we're going to keep we're going to keep it up um, I take my good back officially. Uh, okay. I'm going good. Oh, BD thinks we were going to say good. Uh, I'm not going to go with good. I'm... It's okay. I, I'm going to go with it's okay. It's not, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm putting this at a 3.4. Out of 10? Yeah. That's very bad. It's not great. I would never order this again. <laughs> I, w I, don't I'm not, I'm not I would never that. order it again. I don't want it. I don't necessarily want it. Mm. I don't think I would buy this again, but it's not bad. I'm going to go for like, I don't know, like 4.2. Okay. Yeah, that's... Maybe 4 point, like past 5, 4.7, something. I don't yeah. know. It's very close to 5. It just it doesn't offend me. It's not bad. It's fine. It's It's... All right. Uh, yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. Potato milk. Not Sweet great. Sweet potato yeah. milk. L l like, bottom line, not great. Don't, don't, don't go out of your way to find this. Let me put it to you that way. Mm -hmm. um, now, next week, we have another drink also. Better, better drink, presumably. We'll spill the beans so that you have anticipation for it. All right. I'll, I'll bring it out. Okay. Just wow. Kind of, I want I want you guys to be Snack time is getting a, a little bit more of a I don't know. We never plan for this. Sometimes we have two things to choose from and other times we have nothing. And we you know, lately we've been getting new finding new things. So we got a we got a little bit of a future planning. Yeah. We've got, somebody was asking about, somebody said, drink Coke and milk next week. Come on, man. If Coke made it, I'd try it. But I'm not just going to put Coke and milk together. What do you think? I'm crazy. Um, but we do have K-Wave Coke. It's the 
Korean. L- Korean fruity fantasy flavored limited edition flavor K Wave Coca Cola Coke Zero. I don't know if this is an international release or just here in Japan, but uh, we found this just the other day. But is it available in Korea? That's what I wouldn't know. To our Korean friends, let us know. Yeah. Uh, but next week, we're going to try K Wave. Coca-Cola right here on the Naked and Famous Denim live stream. The greatest live stream in the history of all of the internet. So, if you want to see what goes on there and you want to have your raw denim related questions answered, you guys know what to do. And that is to tune in next week, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here Mm -hmm. on our channel. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't, I don't know why you haven't done it. Now's the time to do it. Definitely the time to do it. Hit that button, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, any, any final for words? Out. That, that's it, I guess. Um, that's it. We'll be back next week. Have a nice weekend. It's uh, going to be um, start of the the spring. Next week, I think. By next week, there should be some cherry blossom going on in yeah. Japan. Yeah. Um, there was one last question. Oh, this is a three hundred and fifty mil bottle. So a smaller bottle than the bigger bottles. They have all kinds of weird bottle sizes here in Japan, but there you go. 350 mils. Um, We'll see you next week. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good weekend.